Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to be showing you a uh, basic uh, spell circle here. So uh, I'll explain this more later, but this one basically just throws you up in the air. Uh, this could be good for if you want like an Elytra launch pad or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know quite what that would be useful for, but I'm sure it's useful for something. So let's start off with this. This is I have auto jump on. This is a impetus. This is the toolsmith's impetus. It activates on a right click. So um, yeah, this is the Fletcher impetus. I'll make I'll remake this with Fletcher impetus here. So this one activates if you look at it for a couple seconds. The the red particles means it activated. It's just it cast the spell, but there, it's invalid, so it spawns red particles. So anyway, spell circles are really nice for casting large, complex spells, or if you just want like one spot to cast the same spell every time it's good for that too. Um, so as you can see I just made a path of these blank slates here and if we activate it you see these little particles coming off of each of the slate that means it's going through reading what's on the slate and adding it to its own stack. Um, so it's like if it were to... it, it basically is a wand of its own kind of it's some stuff is quirky with it so anyway um casting spells from it it does need media so if you put charge amethyst in a hopper you can uh just uh funnel like media into it, it doesn't have to be charge amethyst it can be anything any media form uh, it'll funnel into it and if you have a scrying lens you can look at the block and see how much media it has in it i'm gonna look at this one as you can see this one also has media in it. Um, I don't think it uses media if you're in creative. So yeah if we're in creative here that used no media. If we switch to survival it'll use media. I think this impulse uses media. So it looks really cool. Okay so um yeah, it used media for doing the impulse spell. So, back to this one here. So, spell circle can be as small as just that. And it can be pretty big. I don't know the exact limits of it. Because it's not very specific. But it's pretty large and you probably won't have to worry about hitting the upper limit of spell circles. So we're going to start with writing to blank slates. How do you write to a blank slate? Because you need written spells to a blank slate for it to work. Um, so to write to a blank slate, you do uh, this symbol here. This will just say whatever you're writing right now. Keep that as a pattern and not as a spell. You see it's a different color too and then it says up there hex pattern and then that's just the pattern. And then you want to write scribes gambit which is you start in the middle of a hexagon basically and go go out left or out right and go clockwise. Oh that was a big mess up. And then it writes to the slate and you have a slate that is written on. It shows you the direction if you hover over it. not if it's placed it you just see it you can kinda tell where it ends and starts because it's not like yeah I hope you can see what I'm talking about I don't know how to describe it um, so anyway that's how you write to the spell now let me explain the spell how the spell that I just did on that one works if you don't know we get the person which is you and um, for spell circles the person that it grabs, if you do the diamond thing, it'll just grab whoever activated the spell circle. I think it might do whoever's in the spell circle because, if I'm not mistaken, you do have to be in the spell circle for it to affect you. 
Nope. Okay. Well, you have to... It says something about the spell circle only being able to affect stuff inside the spell circle. Uh, we'll get more into that it's for some of the more advanced spells later. But for just this one, it's not super important. Um, you can also just read the book, maybe. The book is kind of confusing sometimes. So the way spell circles work is you get the pattern slates. I'm not explaining that, am I? I'm explaining how the spell that this one casts works. So this is this one right here is going to grab the player. So if we draw that out, we already have it drawn out. Grabs the player. And then these three are just numbers, because the way that this impulse works is it needs a player and a vector, and then that's it. So I'm going to... You draw the numbers, and the numbers here that I chose are um, 0, 5, 0. The reason I chose that is I just want it to fling you straight up. You could do different numbers if you wanted to get different directions. Um, just know that it would be like this would be x, this would be y, this would be z, and negative numbers would also uh, have effect on that. So just look at f3, figure out which way is which. But the middle one is y, positive y is just going to be straight up. So that's pretty simple. Um, next is this here. This just adds three numbers and turns it into a vector. And you write it like this. It's kind of like a weird backwards scribes gambit, I guess, if I were to describe it. Um, I'll draw it again right there. And that just adds it into a vector. So as you can see, 0, 5, 0, because that's the order that we had it. And then this is just the impulse spell, so you draw that like... Um, it's just like a little arrow with a line through it, like that. Make sure you get full line, because half line would be a blink, which doesn't take vectors. But uh, So if I draw this final one, it's going to fling me in the air. So back to this. Once you know all that, once you know how to draw your spell, sometimes it's a little complicated getting the spells to work with the thing if you're trying to like affect stuff outside of the circle, obviously, because stuff outside the circle does not get affected. But uh, since we're affecting the player itself, it's fine. So again, that, that same order of player, three numbers, turn it into a vector, and then impulse. Now this right here would not work on its own. I think that, I don't know if that uses a media because it didn't actually cast a spell, but this doesn't work because you need to complete the circle. So you can either complete the circle with um, blank slates or it also says any other like media block or something. I, Slates work fine, um, so I'm using slates. Blank slates don't really add anything to the stack, so that's good. I mean, if you wanted to, you could do a bunch of random stuff afterwards. I don't know if the spell would work if you just put different symbols on, though. So uh, I would mess with it. Also, if we have like a split here, uh, I don't know if that would work very well because it needs to know which direction the circle continues but you can also go up walls it says so I think if we do that it this it might work you might need a different block to be able to actually go up walls though yeah um, so just know you can go you can make these 3D, it doesn't have to be a circle, it just gotta be a closed loop. So the loop starts where the arrow is pointing. I don't wanna look at this. But the loop starts where the arrow is pointing forward, so it starts on this one. And then it's just gonna follow any block that is touching it, that it hasn't already gone through, around until you get back to the end of the impetus. So now, if we look at this, it's gonna do the thing and it takes a while to finish because I made such a big circle and then it launches me.
so that's the basics of spell circles um, it's kind of hard to like do advance of spell circles because there's not many iotas are they called iotas there's not many patterns that are specific to spell circles there's a few but it's mostly just like on where the spell circle itself is which is nice but in my opinion not super important I mean it's good for some stuff if you want specific teleports to like exact coordinates based on a uh, thing that the spell circle reads but as far as just like launching yourself or if you already have the specific coordinates written down like in my last spell circle video you don't need to know that but yeah so this is just uh, how spell circles work if you want if you have any uh, like questions um, I'll try and answer them and if you want me to make videos on any other hex casting things I'll also try and make a video on it I I'm not super familiar with hex casting myself but I think I learned pretty quickly so yeah that's it for this one I'm a mushroom Bye-bye.